which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. President, you have a quorum. Thank you. Would you like closed session report now? Yes, do we have a uh, report from the closed session? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we've got a number of items to report from closed session. At tonight's closed session, the board voted to approve the appointment of the following public employee contracts, which are subject to contractual agreement by the chancellor. And all of these votes were five yes, zero no, zero abstentions, and two absences. And the two absences were trustees Withrow and Guillen. Uh, let's see if I can get to this now. Uh, recommendation to approve the extension of Marie Hampton's appointment as the Director of Purchasing Services, effective December 12, 2013, through June 30th, 2015, at an annual salary of $97,850. Recommendation to approve the extension of Gary Banks' appointment to as the Facilities Project Manager, effective December, 20, uh, December 17, 2013 through June 30th, 2014 at 113, $300,000, and that's funded by Measure A. Recommendation to approve the extension of Johnny Fudge's appointment as the Director of Capital Projects, effective December 14, 2013 through June 30th, 2014 at 133,900 annually, and that is also funded by Measure A. Recommendation to ratify the decision of the Chancellor to extend the appointment of Josefina Baltadano as the Interim Vice President of Student Services, Laney College, effective November 16, 2013 through December 23, 2013 at $135,000 annually. Recommendation to approve the appointment of Karen Engel as the Interim Director of Development, District Office, effective December 13, 2013, I'm sorry, December 16, 2013 through June 30th, 2014, or until the position is filled, at 144,200 annually. Recommendation to approve the appointment of Felix Robles as the interim dean of academic and student affairs, liberal arts for Laney College, effective January 6th, 2014, through March 30, 2014, at $118,450 annually. Recommendation to approve the appointment of Trudy Walton as the Vice President of Student Services, Laney College, effective January 2, 2014, through June 30th, 2015, at $149,350 annually. Uh, <clears throat> in addition, the board voted to reject the student appeal of Student Brooks from the District Administrative Determination on a vote of five ayes. Zero no's, two abstent zero abstentions, and two absences, trustees Withrow and Guillen. Um, in regard to the uh, public employee appointments, if any of these individuals are present, could you stand so that we can welcome you and uh, thank you for your work in the new positions. Thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to your service and your continuing service in many cases. Mr. President, that concludes the closed session readout for tonight. Thank you. And now we move to approval of the agenda. And uh, at this point, we have an opportunity to modify the agenda as uh, necessary. Uh, I would like to uh, point out that we are pooling item 28, which is a report, uh, the audit report in both the item uh, from the consent calendar and the presentation that was scheduled uh, for the beginning of this meeting. So there will be uh, neither of those two uh, will be affected by the uh, tonight's agenda. Are there any, it's, it's at this point that you can pull items from the consent calendar. Are there any items? Uh, Mr. President, yes. is, are we also pulling item one, removing item one, which I believe is a uh, matching item to item 28? Yes, it's presentation. That is, so present, that is the presentation. Item one is items. also being removed, and yes. um, just the public should be aware that there is a, a, a substitute resolution on item eight, which I believe is available at the uh, table next to the dais or next to the podium there, uh, dealing with fossil fuels. Um, I'm not sure. I think that it should be.
I apologize. We're okay. just having a conference up here. I'm sorry, I apologize for the interruption, and let's proceed <coughs> with the agenda. Uh, are there I any items that are going to be pulled from the consent no, calendar? I move approval. Uh, all right, there's a motion to... And a second. And a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we proceed then to the next item. And uh, I see, uh, again, a reminder, number one is uh, no longer on the agenda. We move to awards. Awards for... Presentation of awards uh, to outgoing President Galassa and Vice President uh, uh, Guillen. I am stepping down as the uh, president of the board at this time, and uh, we will, in just a moment, have a vote of uh, new. Uh, uh, we'll receive nominees for the uh, posts of the president and the vice president and the um, secretary of the board, uh, but. <clears throat> I, I'm not sure if the appropriate um, thing is for me to remove myself before that, or will I then have... <laughs> just, just keep talking, Scott. Just keep talking You're and blah, blah, blah. I, I want to point out that, um, Chancellor, that it says presentation of awards. It's plural. So um, I've got my car out in front, and uh, I'll be happy to accept as many as you want to um, present. All right, they want me to keep filibustering here, so it's been a real pleasure to serve you all of these years, and I want to thank my colleagues here for their generous support through this whole time. And uh, uh, the, uh, what I'm going to do, as soon as the elections are uh, confirmed, I'm going to um, have my cell phone number changed, and I'm going to make public the phone numbers of the new president and vice president. So with that... So uh, good evening, uh, everyone. This, this evening, as you've already heard, our uh, sitting president, Sai Galassa, will be stepping down after two years of service as president. And the uh, Board of Trustees found it fitting to honor him tonight, first with a resolution and then with a gift. So the resolution where uh, Sai Galassa has given faithful and outstanding service to the community and to the community, <clears throat> the Peralta Community College District since November 2004, serving previously as Vice President of the Board and currently President of the Board for 2012-2013. And whereas this service has, was given freely and without self-interest, ha ha, <laughs> and whereas the students of the Peralta Community College District and the people of the Peralta Community College District have recognized and profited from his services. Now and therefore it resolved that the Board of Trustees and the Chancellor of the Peralta Community Colleges, by this action, extend its gratitude to Saigalasa on behalf of the community, the college faculty, and staff for his service to the Peralta Community Colleges, passed today, uh, 10th of December, 2013. So please join me in thanking President Galasso with the, for his service. Sai, this is for you to take home, put on your wall. I know your wife, Harriet, is just waiting for you. And we, and we, have, we have a little gift. <clears throat> it's actually a big gift. <laughs> and uh, Wei Lee can barely pick it up. <laughs> Sai, uh, this you can take home to your wife and share with her and tell her with our um, gratitude, we uh, also appreciate her allowing you to, to bring service to our community. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. I'll be happy to speed this down. I see chocolate several places there. My grandchildren will be very, very happy to receive this. <clears throat> it's, it's, quite a, uh, it's quite a presentation here. I want to thank all the board members and uh, members of the community and managers and so on. It's been a real pleasure to serve you uh, these years. Uh, I've been an officer off and on at least uh, four times in the past. And uh, it's been a pleasure to serve. And I especially want to thank my colleagues here for their very generous support and, uh, and spiritual support as well as we went through all these difficult times. We're at a very good, healthy place at this moment. 
and I am confident that whoever is elected, they'll be able to carry us through this new portal, and I myself pledge to work diligently on behalf of the institution. I'm not retiring. I'm just going to step aside here and then become a kibitzer from, uh, the, from the side somewhere. And uh, with that, I, I thank you all, and we'll proceed with tonight's agenda. <laughs> I, I, I did want to note that I've always said, why do you give resolutions and you don't frame them and put them in, the, in a really nice frame that can be hung in the office? Uh, there's still time to, you know, reconsider this, Chancellor, et cetera. So I'll leave this uh, very close. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah. I want to also announce that um, the uh, one of our trustees, uh, uh, Abel uh, Guillen, um, his grandfather died, and he's off to uh, in Mexico for the funeral. He will not be back in the district until next uh, Friday. And uh, Trustee Withrow uh, is in um, Los Angeles on business, but he is here um, on a phone uh, listening in, as he did at the closed session as well. So with. <coughs> We're, gonna take We're taking a picture. Okay, this time we'll are up with this. I sort of resent the fact that your hair gets longer and curlier all the time. <laughs> uh, some of us <laughs> are in a reverse mode. <clears throat> at, this, at this point, uh, uh, colleagues, I would entertain nominations for the president of the Board of Trustees. Uh, Mr. President, uh, before I enter a name into nomination, I I'd like to just take a moment to thank you. Uh, you've served two years here. and. I don't know if people understand the, the amount of work that it takes to be the board president. And I thankfully have never had that position. Um, but I know from having been vice president and having watched you uh, for years, knowing that not only does it take a lot of time, it takes a particular temperament, which uh, you have really um, uh, modeled in a really nice way. I can't count the number of conversations that I've had with you where uh, I can see you working to make sure that whatever we do is in the district's best interests and is in the district's, uh, and in the interest of building the relationships in a, in a collegial way. Not, not in a way that, that just kind of brushes over difference, but in a way that really respects the difference, incorporates the various points of view into uh, a coherent, uh, into a coherent set of behaviors and, and attitudes in the district. And I just, I, I'm eternally grateful uh, for your nine years of service on the board here and your uh, many years as board president. Um, having said that, I would like to enter into nomination uh, the name of Abel Guillen for the board presidency. I'll, I'll second it, Mr. President. Right. Uh, are there any other nominations? There being none, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Withrow, are you there? He nodded, yes. <laughs> yeah, I just heard his voice. <laughs> no, I, uh, I understand that your vote won't count because of the zone uh, issues, uh, but we just, um, uh, I was asking for your vote on I, the. I support the board in terms of uh, the election of um, Trustee Kim. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. And now we move to nominations for election of Vice President of the Board of Trustees. Um, nominations are now in order. I'd like to nominate Meredith Brown. All right. I'll second that, uh, Mr. President. Are well, there, well, I'll third that. Are, are, <laughs> are there other nominations? <laughs> there being none, I call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Trustee yes, Withrow concurs, in case anybody couldn't hear that. Yes, thank you, uh, Trustee Withrow. And uh, the next item, uh, we entertain a uh, nominations for the appointment of secretary Mr. to the Board of Trustees. Mr. President, I'd like to nominate Chancellor uh, Jose Ortiz. 
It's been seconded. Are there other nominations? There being none, I call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion Mr. carries. <clears throat> you're, you're quite welcome. <clears throat> Oh, I'm sorry for, again for this interruption. Uh, at this point, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the meetings? There are two meetings involved, October 22nd, and then the special board meeting of November 12th. Is there a motion to approve uh, the minutes? So moved. Seconded? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposition? Abstentions? And now we move to uh, public communication. Do we have cards or speaker cards? The, the cards are forthcoming, and uh, Mr. X, President, uh, <laughs> Mr. President, uh, we have three public speakers tonight. Uh, James, I think this says Blay. Uh, James Blake, thank you. Uh, Romeo Garcia and Lewis Young, in that order, Mr. Blake. Good evening, um, board members, chancellor and administration, and presidents and public. Um, my reason for coming uh, here today is to, uh, to say when Dr. Ortiz arrived, uh, I, I, we had a meeting with the Classified Senate and I basically shared with him some of my feelings about being frustrated and looking at the uh, opportunity to improve what we do in serving our students. And uh, I must say that Dr. Ortiz has helped us by providing us with some training opportunities, customer service, the Oz principle, uh, which I attended with the uh, uh, Board of Trustees. When I think about these, these, these issues and also look at our accreditation standards and obligations, they're all pretty much, uh, pretty much related to one another. And that accountability, transparency, uh, being able to speak truth to, once, to one another, all these things enable us to do a better job of serving our students and serving one another. And we also had uh, the unfortunate occasion of losing uh, a world citizen, uh, Nelson Mandela. And I began to reflect on his character. And he had the ability to see the good in anyone even his captives. And that ability was, was able to help transform their nation. It moved him to become the first, uh, one of their first presidents that came from uh, a situation of hardship, from being in prison to serving that nation and its people, and also the world for that matter. Uh, but I think oftentimes when we have opportunities where we learn and we are enriched, that oftentimes we put those tools on our belt, but we never use them. And I think there's, a, there's an opportunity for Peralta, classified administrators, faculty, and students to do something that doesn't cost any money. And that is collaborate better and communicate better with one another, to serve each other well. And I, I think we need to not allow that to, to move from our sight, lose our grasp. Because we have tools we have on our belts that we never use. And uh, I can appreciate uh, Dr. Ortiz coming in with a new vision, trying to change a culture, build a new house. But we haven't pulled out the hammer, the driving the nails for, for transparency. Uh, we haven't uh, taken out the tape measure to make sure we're working above the line, as in the Oz principle, uh, to see that so everyone can see the mission, the focus, and where we're headed. And I think we need to do that. So this is the last meeting we have for this year, and we're going into uh, a new year. Let us be resolved to take the tools that we have gathered during the 18 months of Dr. Ortiz's tenure uh, and use them 
to help one another do a better job of serving students. I, for one, I am resolved to change what I see that is wrong because I actually feel what the students feel. And every day that I go home at night, I think about how we serve our students. And I wake up, hopefully, thinking that we can do a better job. And I would like everyone to reflect upon that as we go into the next year. Because I'm going to push. And I may be manic at times, but I'm manic because I care. And that we should all care. Thank you very much. If you can begin to wrap up. So uh, I hope we, we keep that in mind. I've learned from the Board of Trustees. I've learned from Linda Handy, her frustration with financial aid issues. I feel you. We're there. OK? I also learned from Trustee Guillaume talking about why we're here, the students. And he, uh, he shared information about uh, why the students are so important. I think about that every day. And, and Dr. Ortiz is telling us to do the right, do the right thing and, and, and do it right. And so we need to start bringing these things to fruition because we're going to lose not only good students, but we're going to lose good classified, good administrators, good faculty, because they're going to be frustrated at our inability to go to the next level. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Blake. You. Thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker is Romeo Garcia. Uh, good evening. My name is Romeo Garcia. I'm the executive director of the Peralta Colleges Foundation. And I'm here this evening to say thank you. Um, December, this now marks my first year as the uh, executive director at the foundation, and it's gone very quickly. Uh, we've accomplished quite a few things in this year, and it certainly has been with the support of the entire community. Uh, just to point out a, a few things, we've started two new programs, the Rising Scholars Voices programs and the Peralta Alumni Partnership Program to support our current students and to reach out to our previous students to make sure that we have the kind of uh, community that we want to help make sure success is what the Peralta Colleges is about. We distributed about $150,000 in scholarships last year. We had two successful events, our golf tournament and uh, just recently our annual dinner just um, two weeks ago where we to collectively we raised $50,000 but I think more important than that, we raised a lot of friends. And the work uh, after the dinner is what's going to really, I think, uh, produce for us the kind of additional support that the foundation needs to support our students. Uh, we have grown our endowments. And also, uh, at this time last year, or just a month from now, we received a $250,000 vote of confidence from the San Francisco Foundation to help to build the capacity for the work of the foundation. And that's what we've been working on in this last year. And so I wanted to come here this evening to say thank you to all of you, because certainly it wouldn't have been without the support of the trustees, of the presidents, of the staff, vice chancellors, um, the students, the staff throughout the district, our corporate partners, and many others to help bring out the Peralta Colleges Foundation in a way that I certainly hope that our community, our larger community, knows that we're here, that we're here to do good work, and that we're here to continue to help our students to achieve and to uh, complete the programs that they've come to, to accomplish in coming to the Peralta Colleges. So thank you again, uh, in particular, for uh, the last two weeks ago when we had our annual dinner. We had 350 people there. We have a, a very good problem for next year, and that is to find a larger venue uh, because the turnout was so great. I would like to thank specifically the PFT for their sponsorship of a table, the uh, PRO for their uh, support for the dinner as well, the uh, staff of the district again, again the trustees, the presidents, the chancellor, our volunteers, our corporate partners, and most of all I'd like to thank our students because when we put the word out that resources are available and there's ways to get involved in the foundation, our students have responded and we want to continue to do what we can to help make sure that they're successful. So thank you very much and I look forward to future years and your support. Thank you thank very you. much. The last speaker we have, Mr. President, is Lewis Young. I'd like to say good evening to the board. And what I'd like to do is to thank the PFT 
for its work and for helping uh, the employees who befall some of the mistakes that they make here and some of the mistakes that are made by administration here. And one, for my, my reason for being here is that my sick leave was remi removed from me and uh, I was at home ill and was told by the dean, called and told by the dean at 9 o'clock in the morning that I'm taking your class away from you. Well, he didn't take my class. Illness took my class. And uh, he removed the sick leave from me. And I was, was kind of, you know, out of it for a minute about this situation. Uh, but I would like to say that to all of uh, the employees here, join the PFT. They will fight for you. And uh, I'm happy to say that I am a member of the PFT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Young. Uh, there are no other speakers in the public session. Uh, thank Nobody you. We, we will now uh, hear reports uh, from the Associated Student Government. <clears throat> Hello, esteemed members of the board. Um, thank you for allowing me this time to address you tonight. Uh, Danny McCarty, who typically makes these reports, is currently away working on finals, so I'm replacing him tonight. Um, my name is Hassan Moore. I am the Chief Justice of the Associated Students of Berkeley City College, and I'm here tonight in order to deliver a report on the activities and future plans of the Associated Students and the Interclub Council. On the first weekend of November, Berkeley City College sent five of its AS members to the Student Senate uh, for California Community Colleges. I had the distinct honor of being a part of this delegation and along with my colleagues supported and refined the resolutions of both region mates and allies from across the state. Uh, this conference was extremely enlightening um, and provided all of our members within the delegation with the skill set that we readily applied to the AS on our return. On the home front, the Associated Students of Berkeley City College have benefited from an impressive reform cycle over the past two months. There are six executive um, and accountable committees in supplement to AS General um, initiatives, including ruling documents committees uh, that have rebuilt senatorial duties and streamlined unwieldy financial procedures. The ASBCC has also um, assigned a pair to every accreditation committee on our campus and our representatives have been present at Roundtable and other shared governance meetings on campus. We have also maintained our pledge to cross-district camaraderie, attending meetings and exchanging ideas with our sibling colleges and sibling ASs. Our clubs have held successful events, including canned food, clothing, and toy drives. We have personally uh, supported relief efforts in the wake of the Philippine typhoon in collaboration with UC Berkeley. We have also made considerable advancements in social media and connectivity, uh, in an effort to better connect with our student body. Uh, actually, this morning, the Associated Students hosted and staffed uh, student staff and faculty appreciation continental breakfast, an event which brought 500 members of faculty, staff, and the student body together. Looking forward, the Associated Students have planned a collection of welcome back events for next semester, including a government and civics day to better engage our mandate as public officials, a uh, rush week to connect our clubs with the populations that they serve, and Valentine's Day event. In the coming semester, the official newsletter of the Associated Students, the BCC Voice, will be launching campus-wide and online. And a line of merchandise will be available to, for purchase to our students as a symbol of school pride. Again, thank you for your time and consideration. And on behalf of my president, Valentino Calderon, the entire Associated Student Council and the Interclub Council, I would like to express our gratitude for your service to, the, to this institution, which grants all students a voice. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, board members. My name is Jeremy Raleigh. I'm the Vice President of Operations at College of Alameda. <coughs> so um, earlier this month, we started a clothing drive, which we meant, was meant, originally meant for uh, the more needier students uh, here at our campus. But then later on during the month, we decided that we were going to stop giving out as much clothes, because on our first day of the drive, we almost gave away all our clothes away. So and then the, with the remainder of the clothes we're giving to the uh, Philippines, to help with them, help with the situation over there. Um, to do, uh, doc, Dr. Ingrid Stark, which is the v Vice President of Instructions, was gracious enough to pay for half of the dry cleaning expenses for the clothes. Uh, we start, we're in the works of starting a canned food drive, which we hope to spill over into the upcoming semester to send over to the Philippines as well. Uh, a few of, uh, one of our anthropology instructors Teachers, I mean not teachers, sorry, students um, are in the works of or in collaboration with us on buying water filters to send over to the Philippines. Um, we are having an ASCO retreat the 10th, 9th and 10th of January. Uh, one day we'll be at SFSU and one day on campus. Uh, la the two days before we went away for Thanksgiving break, we had a We Are, Th we are Family Thanksgiving dinner which was meant for just to bring camaraderie amongst the students and faculty on, on campus. Uh, it was our first event, our first night event. It uh, went pretty well. We had about 80 students there, which is kind of difficult on a Tuesday right before a, a break. And also, we sent three executive members to the Proctor College's Foundation fundraiser earlier in the month. That concludes my report. Hi, my name is Tracy Christian. I'm the president of Mary College Associated Students. I'm here to report that we just had a retreat at our college last weekend with our new advisor. When we come back from our break, we're going to be doing Club Rush, inviting all the clubs on campus to collaborate with each other and help make a successful new semester. We have Student Appreciation Day. Uh, we now have students on our shared government, governance committee, so I'm excited about that. So we'll have student represent, representation at each meeting. Um, and we are going to be spreading the word about scholarships on our campus. So more of the students to know about the scholarships, not just have a stack of them or a sign. I know it's on the web, but if you give it mouth to mouth and spread the word and encourage them to apply for the scholarships and even help them apply for the scholarships if that's what they need. BSU did a clothing, clothing drive at our college and they raised a lot of clothes to give out to different families. We're working with Criminal Justice Club. We'll be having a, a dinner at Shiloh Church on Thursday evening. So that would be a great success. And that's all for my report tonight. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Um, I'm Carl Oliver, the ASOC president. Um, since the last, uh, my last report at the board meeting on October 22nd, ASOC has been very busy. Um, we have been collaborating with um, administration and faculty at the school, um, working with the IT program, implementing a new layout for the, um, for the Laney website. Um, we're working with the learning assessment committee to um, on a Don't Make Me Guess campaign um, is to make students aware of SLOs, um, help out with accreditation. Um, for events, we had a Halloween party on October 31st, and not a Halloween. It was a great success. Students came out. Um, a few faculty came out, including um, uh, faculty, um, Senate President Evelyn Lord. She came out, she had a few moves. Um, she loves Michael Jackson, just to let you guys know. So, um, 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 the, the district academic senate, and, um, district academic senate president, uh, Dr. Van Putten, also came out, um, came to mingle with the students. Uh, Dr. Webb came out, um, danced. She, she was out there dancing too. We have a video of that. Uh, so, so um, and, um, it's, it's, I've been, I'm really proud to be a, a Laney student leader right now. We're 
Um, we're getting a lot of support right now from our administration and faculty. Right now we're, we're um, working to implement workshops um, during professional development week uh, before the uh, spring semester to, to, so faculty and administration can collaborate with students to put on events and um, do more civic, engage civic engagement and um, discussions um, in the forum and stuff like that. So um, also we went to SSCCC uh, November 1st through 3rd. We sent 16 members. Um, it was it was a great um, great success. Students students learned a lot. Uh, we went through various workshops, including resolutions, writing, and processes, which I have started to to um, implement and <laughs> and started practicing with. Um, we also donated uh, one thousand dollars to the care program at our school to help out with Thanksgiving to um, make it easier for students uh, during the holidays. Um, uh, over the break, we'll have a retreat. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, I'm inviting everyone to come out. We'd like to learn. Uh, we're all about collaborating right now. Our president is um, teaching us how to be great leaders right now. She's trying to give us more yeses, less noes, which she likes to say. So um, it's, it's a great effort. Um, what else? Um, um, next semester, we're holding a welcome, welcome back week. The entire week um, will be just welcoming back the students, give, um, giving out prizes. Uh, playing music, um, and we will be honoring our president, Dr. Webb, and our chancellor, Dr. Ortiz, um, for all the work he's doing and and improving student success um, here at Peralta. Um, we've had a few um, two. He's I've been to two di uh, different Peralta student council meetings, which he has attended. Um, I'm inviting the next for the next uh, Peralta student council meeting, maybe some district members to attend. Um, it's really informative. Um, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and now we move to reports from the chancellor and his team. Uh, thank you very much, President Galasso. <clears throat> you heard our, our foundation director, Romeo Garcia, mentioned the gala dinner, uh, I guess it was last week, what he failed to mention was that the uh, chancellor took it to another level. He put it on the Ritz. And uh, starting this year and every year on out, we expect tuxedos, <laughs> long gowns, and dancing shoes. All right, so keep that in mind. I also uh, had a, a strange opportunity or occurrence that very same week when the Fruitvale um, um, business community uh, got wind that the uh, Chancellor of Peralta Colleges <laughs> is the first Latino chancellor. And of course, Fruitvale being predominantly Latino, they thought, well, we should recognize this gentleman even if it is a year and a half late. <laughs> but a year and a half notwithstanding, we had a great time, I thought, and I appreciate um, the community for coming out. I appreciate the city of Oakland for doing a resolution, city of Berkeley doing a resolution, some of our assembly members doing resolutions. So of course, um, with all humility, I hope they all feel the same way when I leave. <clears throat> last week, was it last week? Thanksgiving, we're entering our holiday season. I want to uh, wish all of our uh, Peralta College communities uh, a uh, happy and safe holiday season. Uh, hopefully the weather turns a little more accommodating for all of us. Um, this is a time for rest and reflection. And I want to share with you all that um, for me and my experience here as the chancellor, um, trying to echo a little bit of James Blake's words. Uh, I'm just trying to do the right thing and do things right. And I think that um, from what I understand, um, it resonates with, with many of our college community 
and with our accreditation cycle coming up again, we're going to prove to that commission that the brother colleges know how to do the right thing and do things right. I'm going to pass the baton on to uh, President Gravenberg, who wants to talk a little bit, I hope, about a grant that he's going to be pursuing. Dr. Gravenberg. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, board members, good evening, members of the public. Uh, entrepreneurship is something that we are actively exploring at all of our campuses, uh, particularly at the College of Alameda. Uh, we've been asked to um, pursue some opportunities with the State Chancellor's Office with regard to entrepreneurship. This is just kind of information only. Uh, we hope that our proposal is successful, and when it is, we'll come back. But uh, we hope to establish a center for urban entrepreneurship. We want to work very closely with all the colleges because they have similar interests. I know when I was at Merritt College, and I've had some conversations uh, with the president at their campus in terms of how we might be able to collaborate district-wide and city-wide. So this is really just kind of information for your benefit. But we also know from our research that in terms of academic achievement and success, many of our young men who are critically at risk in terms of their own academic performance, this is the force multiplier. Uh, this is the thing that they are really looking forward to in terms of how to become entrepreneurs, how they can give back to the community. It is also a vital piece in terms of how we can stimulate economic development in our communities. So we look forward with anticipation for this and other grants that we're going to be pursuing and working with our sister colleges in terms of growing the entrepreneurship program. And Trustee Brown, you know, one of the things that we're concerned about is how do we do this internationally, given where we are, uh, looking at transportation, working with our international students programs. Uh, all of our campuses, I think, are poised, and we look forward to collaborating with the board and others to make that a success. Thank you. Thank you, President Gravenberg, uh, and that ends our uh, administrative reports for this evening, President Galassa. Thank you. <clears throat> and now we move to reports from the uh, Board of Trustees. And uh, we'll start with uh, Trustee Handy. I'll include it in it. It's been a it's a, been a busy few weeks. Um, we had the opportunity to um, attend the California Community College Trustees Conference for three days in Burlingame, and um, at the same time, make it back for the Peralta Foundations Gala, which was amazing. People are still talking about. It. I think it was the the party of of the season, of the holiday season. Um, also had an opportunity to meet with the Peralta retirees, um, and that was a very interesting and informative meeting. Um, and the Building Trades Luncheon had an opportunity to attend that. And also there was the Multicultural All Chambers event, where um, the head of our um, Oakland Chamber, Joe Heriberta, is, has, is going to retire. So that was a very interesting event to be at. And then there was a really incredible black elected officials and faith-based leaders event. And so, as I say, it's been a very, very busy season, but um, it is good to get out and be amongst people who are all have the same goal, to make Oakland a better place. And so even though it's a very busy schedule, it's a very good one to have. It's a very um, good thing to be involved in. Um, I have to thank, again, Romeo Garcia for the success of our events and for the success of our foundation. We have an incredible group of people who are helping. And we're also looking for new members of the foundation, too. So please put the word out there. The more people with more diverse skills, the more opportunities we have to raise money for our number one project, which is our students and scholarships. And thank you all for your support in that. Thank you. On November the 1st, I had the opportunity to also um, attend the um, Student Senate of California Community College General Assembly, and it was totally amazing. The students were able to collaborate together on issues and vote on issues and work together as a team representing Peralta Community College. Um, the, I also attended um, Alameda's 
Thanksgiving dinner that they had on November the 21st. Um, they brought out about a hundred and something students. That was really amazing as well for the students themselves to put together their own event, uh, of course, with collaboration of the administration. And um, I was, would like to see the next year the other three colleges do the same. Um, they fed students that um, didn't, wasn't able to have Christmas dinner because they didn't have funding. And that was one way to feed some of those students. I was um, also wanted to thank all the um, student governments for um, participating in the um, Peralta Community College um, PSC committee and working on issues that um, addresses all student issues at all four uh, campuses and hope we can continue our work throughout next year. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. And Trustee Brown? It appears that I was on the same calendar as our Chancellor Ortiz and uh, Trustee Handy and also Trustee Riley uh, with respect to the um, fabulous uh, Peralta Foundation uh, Gala. That was such an inspiring event to see the accomplishments and the, the breadth of talent and potential that our students have. That was a wonderful event. The room was packed and there was a lot of hope and energy that we're going to carry through for next year. And also the um, honoring our chancellor, he kindly did not um, mention my, my clumsy attempt to honor him in uh, bilingually, so I appreciate that. I'll be enrolling in um, Spanish classes um, as soon as the spring enrollment uh, <laughs> opens. And um, also, I'd like to just mention that we've had this theme of collaboration and, and um, unification of effort uh, throughout the, the evening. And from, uh, from Dr. Gravenberg's mentioning the international program and how we want to reach out, and I know that he's also mentioning our desire to reach out in emerging, um, emerging countries like uh, Latin America and Africa, as well as, as the Pacific Rim. Those sort of things are what we can do now because we've gotten, we've gotten through the rocky part. I really believe that because we were able to get initiatives passed and we were able to get past accreditation, now is the time that we're going to soar. And it's an awesome opportunity for us to take the potential and talent that we have at Peralta and show them what the Bay Area really can do. So um, I just want to say to everyone, have happy holiday, get some rest because we're really going to be taking off um, when the year starts. And it's been a wonderful opportunity this past year to work with the people at Peralta, the, the, the students, the staff, the administration, being able to go to Washington, D.C. with the students and being able to advocate for Peralta has been a pleasure and an honor. And I look forward to next year. Thank you. And student trustee Wiley. Uh, first, uh, good luck to all the students and for the final exam. And the second one is thank you for all Parato staff and faculty. Because without your great work, the student is, won't be that successful. And it's very great. I heard so many students, they have turned in and submit their transfer application and keep going on and don't forget to turn in your transcript too. And the third one is, uh, I want to remind one thing. I have a friend, she was a Lenny Chorus A plus program student. She got a scholarship from UCLA. Uh, in the Americans, uh, uh, Asian American study. That's very great. We have the Perato Foundation. She resist before and uh, that keep motivate her and continue to uh, apply some scholarship in the uh, four year college. And also the last thing, and I have a piece Thanksgiving dinner with uh, many uh, students they from uh, their first kid for the uh, they are the first family member to the college. And the great thing is, <laughs> one, they get accepted by the medical doctor program in the uh, USC. The other one, uh, he get accepted by the um, uh, farmer's um, program from the Buffalo University. And the third one, uh, she get accepted um, she got the, uh, She already just graduated from the UC Berkeley the law school and she got the intern program in Hawaii and that's very great. 
we always keep continue and work hard and also we achieve a higher education. Thank you. Thank you. And Trustee Gonzalez Yen. Thank you, President Glossa. Uh, I have to apologize for my informal attire tonight, um, especially after the Chancellor has raised the bar and, and called for board members to wear gowns and tuxedos at every board meeting. Uh, I'll have to work on that, but I, I, the choice today, I was, uh, <laughs> the, the choice today, thank you, Trustee Handy. Uh, the choice today was either being late or being informal, and I decided that uh, the better choice was to just be informal. Um, I too was at the the foundation uh, dinner, and it was a it was fabulous fair. Uh, it reminded me, especially because of the breadth of representation that we have here, is that the Peralta family is a broad family serving both students and also the community. That we have a broad mission of betterment of the community, and we work in many many uh, ways. I, in, in this particular season, what I, what I notice is that students are working hard to improve themselves, uh, working hard to, to learn to, you know, in the midst of the frantically trying to pass classes and get grades and so forth, that really what they're looking at is investing in themselves and investing in their communities. And when I see faculty members and student services personnel and groundskeepers and custodians doing the same thing, uh, along with our administrators, working really hard to try to improve our community. And it reminds me that as we think about the struggle that we're in, that it's not just a struggle for improved community college education, but it's a struggle for broad community betterment. And when we lose sight of that, we end up fighting with each other. What we've done really well, I think, in the last period of time, and, and, I, and I really want to, again, uh, thank my colleague, uh, uh, Sai. Uh, is we've, we've managed to pull together and put aside our differences and focus on, on what's common. And uh, the two particular things that I've been working on that I'd like to um, thank students for um, is one, uh, increasing the minimum wage in our community. Uh, students at Berkeley City College in particular, but throughout the community colleges, uh, throughout the Peralta colleges, have been, have been working really hard to organize in our communities to raise the, the minimum wage. And last uh, Saturday at Berkeley City College, there was a mobilization that students put together uh, to reach out to community members to gain support for a ballot, not a ballot, but a, an ordinance that will come before the Berkeley City College to raise the minimum wage. It was amazing because right at that very time, uh, there was a wonderful literary fair in the, in the atrium level of the Berkeley City College. It was packed to the gills with writers and artists and people who were publishing these little zines and, and beautiful illustrations and you know, comic books. And uh, it really reminded me what a wonderful community we are. Uh, the other area, of course, that we're going to be really struggling over in the next year probably has to do with pension reform. There is a, there is a, a myth in our society that the reason that we're all going broke is that there are lazy and uh, overprivileged public workers who are just, who are just having the audacity to retire with pensions, and uh, there is a push from uh, a number of mayors in this state to strip pension rights from public employees, pensions that have been earned and worked for over a lifetime, and they're going to try to sell us a story that says that our enemies are school teachers and nurses and firefighters. Well, that's just plain wrong. And what I see happening in our community, particularly with student leadership, is that uh, we are pulling together shoulder to shoulder to understand what we do to better our communities is to uh, support each other as brothers and sisters and not fight with each other. We know who the enemy is, and uh, it's not us. So um, anyway, thank you very much, and uh, I, you know, as we, as we move forward, um, I'd like to just call to mind, I think, the man that, that we're all thinking about this week, and that's Nelson Mandela, who really showed us the way of how we organize uh, shoulder to shoulder uh, in reconciliation and uh, sisterhood and brotherhood. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Trustee gonzalez -Yen. And uh, I also would like to thank you for your uh, work out in the community. You've been a real leader. 
an organizer, and uh, maybe some of you don't realize this, but how, how many years did we share together at De Anza College? Uh, I've known him when he was just a baby. Um, it's been decades now, Cy. Si. And uh, we had a meeting, and I invited you to join the union, and everything has been perfect ever since. But really, <laughs> truly, thank you, Nikki. It's been at least uh, 15 years that we uh, were colleagues uh, together. And it was a, a wonderful uh, uh, enterprise. I um, uh, do, uh, went to many of the same events that have already been enumerated here and would just simply apply uh, adjectives of wonderful, exciting, and uh, really uh, heartwarming experiences. Um, but in particular, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't also join the chorus of celebration of our gala affair. And uh, I, I, I want to thank uh, everyone who was involved in it. And uh, I had a special privilege of uh, knowing that some of my family were coming in from out of state, and I bought a table and had the whole family sit there through the whole wonderful thing uh, to indoctrinate them as to what I do for a living and have done for a living for all these years. So tell, I appreciate. Tell jokes. Pardon? Tell jokes for a living. Dog jokes, no matter. No <laughs> And that's true. I did tell one, and, and uh, I'm still receiving uh, negative uh, comments from friends, so there will be no further any uh, doctors. So anyway, um, I also want to make a final statement here. Congratulations to um, Meredith uh, Brown on her uh, ascending to the vice uh, presidency of this um, august body. Uh, as you all know from her performance, uh, she is a very articulate, a very brilliant uh, woman, and uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with her this uh, past year, and think again, it's only been a year, and she's fully up to speed and ready to really roll. So I want to thank you, uh, Meredith, for your uh, leadership and for the leadership to come. And of course, uh, all of you know Abel uh, and what a work, uh, what a, uh, a force he is in the community, and his outstanding work, uh, not just with the members of the community, but with the students. There's a genuine love and affection and real uh, deep uh, devotion. I know he will do well uh, here as a president, and I look forward to the combined uh, leadership and talent of, uh, of these uh, colleagues. And uh, with that, <coughs> um, we come to a report, District Academic Senate. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK. Um, I think it takes a vote of the entire board here to, to allow you to talk, but uh, let's go ahead. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, just briefly recognize our general counsel, Tui Nguyen, and her initiative of the 2 plus 2 plus 3 program that um, hopefully will be paving the way to a more diversified cadre of attorneys and judges. Um, she led a very uh, popular workshop at the uh, CCCT conference in Burlingame standing room only, and it was extremely well received, and uh, I was very proud to uh, see her up there. Uh, also, I'd like to recommend that the, uh, the board members come up to speed with the new directives coming out of Washington as it relates to the uh, responsibilities, specific responsibilities of the governing board trustees with respect to student success in quality education. Um, they're very extensive. They're going to be uh, enforced through the accreditation process, and I believe a number of us might view them as controversial. They can be found on the uh, league website and I think the state chancellor's site and um, ACGC. That's it. Uh, thank you. And now we move to a report from the District Academic Senate and President Carolyn Van Putten. Thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, trustees, district administration center staff, college presidents, colleagues, and members of the public. <clears throat> As some of you may recall, this semester I returned to teaching psychology after a six-year absence from the classroom on other college assignments. In dialogues about my intention, several of my colleagues suggested subtly that what's happening in our classrooms in 2013 is quite different 
than what was true in 2007. I now see what they must have meant. Without going into detail about those changes and their implications, suffice it for now to say that what has changed about our student population appears to me to be indicative of the problems facing higher education today. For the past several days, most of my non-life supporting brain power has been focused on reading and grading student research papers, and thus far the results have been more than a little distressing. In brief conversations with some of my colleagues, it is apparent that my experience is not unique. I am committed to opening space for my colleagues to share and reflect on these experiences early next semester with the intention of organizing ourselves to propose and advocate for substantive changes in how we structure the curriculum so that we can improve student preparedness and ultimately their successes both in and after college. While most of the student success support program components focused on wraparound student services, it's clear that there is also a need for wraparound academic support that will help fill some of the gaps between where our students are and where they should be in order to succeed in the larger society. In a previous report to you, I mentioned the research project conducted by the RP group, Student Support Redefined. This three-year study aims to understand how, in an environment of extreme scarcity, community colleges can deliver support both inside and outside the classroom to improve achievement outcomes for all students. It is organized around a cluster of six factors that students say are important to their success as community college learners. These six factors are directed, focused, nurtured, engaged, connected, and valued. Also included in the report is a set of factor-specific questions we will use to guide our exploration into why these factors matter and how we can incorporate them into our emerging student success strategies. Last week, the District Academic Senate set as one of its goals creating a framework for engaging faculty in realizing these six factors. As part of that framework, during the time you have allotted to reports from the District Academic Senate, it is our intention to showcase faculty who will share with you how we are actualizing those factors in our classrooms. You can expect to hear more about this initiative next semester. Dr. Dollar Cooper, the project director for this RP group research study, will be a feature presenter during the District Flex Day on January 15th. I encourage each of you and all of my colleagues to attend and participate in Dr. Cooper's presentation as we take specific steps using that research to significantly improve student success throughout the district. That concludes my report for tonight. Thank you. And now we move to the consent calendar, and I understand we have uh, three speakers on item eight, and the speakers uh, are privileged to uh, express their concerns or uh, their approval um, prior to our actual vote. And um, before they, we call them forward to speak, I would like uh, Trustee Gonzalez Yen to put into context exactly the, uh, the item on which they wish to speak. Item eight. Thank you, President Glossa. Uh, the public speakers are Ophir Brook, Judy Pope, and Deborah Selvey. Um, they're going to be speaking on item number eight, which is uh, a resolution that was uh, put forward by Trustee Guillen, who he could not make it tonight uh, because of a death in the family. And this resolution calls on our district to take action uh, on the climate crisis that uh, faces all of us. There's a movement in this country to try to figure out how to move our economy onto a, a, a more environmentally sustainable footing. And one of those directions is to try to figure out how do we undermine the, the economic power of the fossil fuel industry? Well, one of the ways that we can do this is to mirror the actions that many of us were, were supporting in the 1980s uh, in the 1970s uh, in the anti-apartheid movement uh, quite successfully, as a matter of fact. And so Trustees uh, Brown and Guillen, uh, as well as other people in the district, um, including the Retirement Board and uh, our former Vice Chancellor uh, Gerhardt, uh, worked really diligently to figure out a responsible way, uh, both financially as well as politically, and socially to uh, move us forward in this direction. And so we have a resolution before the board right now 
to uh, encourage policy statement uh, that divests our district from investments in, in the fossil fuel industry. Um, so with that, uh, let me call forward the public speakers, Ophir Brook, uh, Judy Pope, and Deborah Sylvia, and I want to thank them for their work in the community uh, in bringing this issue to our attention and uh, moving it forward within our district. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I really am here to uh, represent some of the other members of the 350 Bay Area Divestment Campaign. And can you identify yourself? I'm Deborah Sylvie. Thank you. Yes, and uh, mainly want to thank you uh, the, very much. The, the board has been very supportive, especially uh, Nikki Gonzalez Yuen, Abel Guillen, and Meredith Brown has been helpful in getting this resolution uh, into something that, that is going to really make a difference for this district, and the chancellor as well. Also, I'm, I wish that I could be thanking Ron Gerhardt because he was the one who did the financial study to show that this is a financially uh, important thing to do and, and wise thing to do. So I, with that, I would like to introduce a student, uh, Ophir Brook, uh, who will speak, and then Judy Pope. Thanks, Deborah, and thank you all. Um, I studied both at Berkeley City College and at Laney College, mostly online, but it enabled me to transfer to UC Berkeley. I'm now a senior uh, studying environmental science policy and management, and I'm also honored to be part of an international and quickly growing youth climate movement that acknowledges that this is the issue of our generation, that we're inheriting a, ch a rapidly changing climate that's going to drastically uh, impact every part of our lives, especially those of us who are um, in less of a position uh, to respond to these changing conditions. Um, marginalized communities, the world's poor. So at UC Berkeley, we've got a uh, campaign as well to divest uh, UC Berkeley and the UC system from the fossil fuel industry. It's a hugely growing movement that is deeply inspiring to, to see. And I just want to thank you all in the room for stepping up and showing, standing behind the students and showing that you are acknowledging, acknowledging the breadth of this uh, climate crisis and that you're ready to take action and uh, ensure future, you know, the graduating classes, a livable future. Um, so way to go. Uh, deep gratitude. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I think I just want to echo the thanks. Um, my name is Judy Pope, and I've been working on this divestment campaign for a, a, more than a year now. Um, and from the first, we were welcomed at the Peralta Community Colleges District, um, which is not always the case when you're working on something as harrowing as climate, fighting climate chaos and fighting climate change. We are not always as well made as welcome um, as we have been here by the Chancellor, by Nikki and Abel, who were cha early champions, by uh, Trustee Meredith Brown. We met with her. It was very encouraging. We have met twice with the um, Peralta Retirees Organization. That was also, those were wonderful meetings. Um, and now it, uh, we hope and, uh, and um, we feel pretty sure that you folks are going to pass this resolution, and we understand it's advisory to the Retirement Board. And one of the things that's very interesting is what's happened in the year since pretty much we started this campaign, which is the increasing information coming from radical sources like Deutsche Bank and um, you know, the World Bank and places like that, that it is not only the right thing to do um, morally to divest from fossil fuels, but it's the safest thing to do. It's the safest thing to do for retirement funds because of the coming carbon bubble the stranded assets, we're not going to be able to take all this stuff out of the ground, and this is going to start changing very, very rapidly. So this is a smart thing to do for the retirees, for future retirees, as well as the right thing to do for the future of the students and the planet. 
So we thank you so much for all of your good work and for your support, and we look forward to continuing to work with you as this move movement spreads. Thank you <coughs> very much. Uh, just to explain, this item is on the consent calendar, and we're going to vote uh, all of the items uh, simultaneously with one vote. Uh, and so I'll ask, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll move that. Is it, is, if it's moved and seconded, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, and the motion, I mean, the consent calendar passes and the particular um, uh, board resolution uh, passes. So thank you all for your work and thank you, uh, Deborah Sylvie, for getting me the information that uh, you promised. I appreciate it very much. And with that, yes. <clears throat> Just one person I left out of, of my uh, list, and that is the chancellor. You know, nothing happens in this district, really, without the support of the chancellor. And the chancellor very early uh, expressed support for this, this initiative, uh, worked, with, uh, worked with the members of the community, with students, uh, and with interested trustees to make this happen. And I, I really want to applaud his leadership in this work and, and his continuing leadership. Thank you. Linda, Linda wanted to comment on item 26. No, no, no. Oh. No, I, no, 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 no,